All right, I'm gonna show you how to create a secure image file on a Mac. And this will let you basically keep your files encrypted onto a disk image, um, which you can uh, move wherever you want. It's portable. You can put it on a flash drive, take it over to another Mac, open it there. Uh, it doesn't work on PCs, unfortunately, but it is a good way to keep your files encrypted. So first thing we're gonna do is go to Applications Go down to your Utilities folder, and then you're going to click on Disk Utility. And then what you're going to do is click on New Image at the top here. You're going to create a file name for it. We're just going to call this Secure Files. We're going to save it to the desktop. The name of this disk image, we're going to make the same thing, secure files. The name is just what the name will be once it's mounted, uh, as opposed to the file name, which is just the name of the image file. You'll see what that means in just a second here. All right, on the size, I usually do a custom size. We're gonna make this one two gigabytes. And this is just gonna be the maximum file size that it will be. The way we're gonna create the image is that it's going to uh, adjust its size according to the size of the files that it contains. And um, so the two gigabytes here is just the maximum size that it's gonna be. All right, the format, Mac OS Extended Journal, that's fine. Encryption, choose 256-bit encryption. Uh, at least that's what I would recommend. Uh, you can do 128-bit. Either way, the data is being encrypted, so it, it is secure. 256-bit uh, is technically more secure, but maybe a little bit slower. I haven't really noticed much of a difference on speed between 128-bit and 256-bit. So just for safety's sake, I usually choose 256-bit. No reason not to, really. On the partitions, just keep that how it is by default uh, for the purposes of what we're doing. Image format, you're going to want to choose the sparse bundle disk image. And the reason that is is that's what's going to create an image that will um, change its file size according to how big the files are that is is inside it. And um, it will also make it better if you have any backup applications running because it will back up the disk image in sections, uh, which is much more efficient than just backing up the entire thing. It'll just back up changes as it goes. All right, so click Create here. And go ahead and enter whatever password you want to use. Obviously, the more complex, the harder it is to guess. But you'll definitely want to remember what it is because there is no password recovery feature or anything. If you forget your password, your data is gone. And uncheck the remember password in my keychain if you want to really have a bit more security. Um, it, it's going to make it so you have to type in your password every time you open the image file. Uh, but again, it's more security because nothing's going to remember your password and enter it automatically. All right, so you can see it created it over here on the desktop. That's the image file and it went ahead and mounted it for us, which you can see right there. Just as an example, we're going to drop a file in there. You can create folders. Works just like any other directory in the operating system. Once you're done with working with what you need to on it, just eject it. And then you've got your image file still sitting there. You can move it wherever you want to. You could put it on a USB flash drive so you can take it to a different computer. 
Uh, again, this image format only works on a Mac. You won't be able to open that on a PC. And to access it, simply just open it. It'll ask you for your password because we told it earlier not to remember it in our keychain. Um, if you change your mind on that, you can always check that. That'll prevent you from having to type the password every time. It'll just make it so when you log into your account on your Mac, it will just remember the password to this. So again, just type in your password and it will pull it up for you. And just to show you one other thing on why we used a sparse bundle file, you can see that the actual file of this is 38.5 megabytes. It's not two gigabytes that we had set as the maximum, which is very nice. If you were to use a DMG file, this, this would actually be two gigabytes and it, it just gets uh, unwieldy. So as you add files to this, this, this uh, file size will grow until it reaches the maximum of two gigabytes or whatever you set when you made the file originally. All right, so that's it. Thanks for watching.